Uh, I'm just hoping it don't crash because I'll have to forcefully reboot my system if that happens. As I told always today, we, we will meet at the safe house afterwards so that we can swap the plans. One one zero zero one one zero one. We are live! This is the Total OS Today Show, number five, right here on the terrific LDC, the Linux Distro Community.com. I am, of course, tossed today, and tonight we will discuss and have some fun with this. We will be discussing spy technology. Do, 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 do. That's right, spy versus spy technologies. Yes, but uh, Spatry, I just had a thought. If this is supposed to be a secret, that means we can't do it, so we have to leave, right? Yeah, that's right. We, yeah, because we have to meet at the safe house to swap the plans. That is correct. But before we leave, please tell us who is on the show this evening, comrade. Okay, we got Cecil, we got Oscult, uh, Oscult, we've got me and you. No, that no, is no, no, correct. Don't, don't tell them my name. My name is... Garge. Garge is my name. Oh, Garge. Garge. Nice to meet you, Garge. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? Spy technology. So, when, now, when, now when I say spy technology, I'm thinking how to think like a spy. And if, I don't know if we have any, have any spy wannabes, but one of my favorite shows, actually my favorite show on TV right now, is a show called Burn Notice. This is starting its sixth season. Uh, I believe on the USA Network. I love it. It's awesome. Uh, terrific show. Terrific writing. Uh, it's all about a spy who's been burned. And basically, in spy terms, a spy who's been burned, meaning he's been fired from his job for no apparent good reason. And the show throws in a little bit of spy tidbits here and there. So I thought for tonight we will have some fun talking about spy technology, low-tech spy technology. Now, let me give you guys an example. <laughs> Let's say that you think that you are being followed. Now, when I mean followed, let's say you're driving in your car. Um, maybe you're on vacation, and you think you're being followed by a little red Corvette, but you're not sure. What do you do? Well, <clears throat> besides throwing a stick of dynamite at the guy like Spatry would do, you know, like when he goes fishing. <laughs> uh, yes, but, you know, let's now... Of course, you want to think like a spy, so you want to be low-key and quiet. This is what I would do. Now, I've, I've never done this, but this is what I would do if I felt that something was not right. I would pull into a gas station, okay? I would put in maybe $5 worth of gas, and I would notice that little red Corvette. Okay, maybe he's following me, maybe not. Put in $5 worth of gas. Drive away. Maybe just drive two or three blocks. Turn around, pull into the same gas station, put another $5 worth of gas. If that same car is there, chances are you're being followed. I suppose if you really, really wanted to be sure, drive around like an idiot, go around to the same gas station, put in another $5 worth of gas, or pretend to. If that car is there, the same little red Corvette, chances are you are being followed. Now, of course, the trick is now, what do you do? Well, me, I would probably drive to the local police station just to file a report. Because chances are, if you've done this driving like a moron three times, which probably wouldn't be hard to do for most of us in this country, chances are, if that little red Corvette is there, after three times, you are being followed. Spatry, how do you see it? What if it's the police in the Corvette that are following you and you go into the police station and then they lock you up? I think the oil slick in the car is a really good idea. And then driving at high speed and, you know, just littering the road with lots of oil all over the place and causing casualties uh, all over the place, you know, 50 car pile up, you know, that sort of thing. The thing... Uh, the th <laughs> You're gonna get chased by somebody. You have to kill them. <laughs> I joke. I joke. Yeah, I totally agree. Obviously, if you're getting followed, it's not very hard to tell if you're getting followed. If if you're if you're stopping at the same gas station and seeing the same car three times in a row, you're getting followed. And I most certainly would inform the police of that. Of course, sometimes a bit of confrontation might not hurt, but not always the smartest idea there. 
So in those cases, you might go to the police and that or that or you uh you run down that red car, pull that forty four magnum out of the glove box, and show them who's really boss. No, never mind. Don't do that, folks. You guys have been watching way, way too many westerns or Dirty Harry movies, right, Spencer? <laughs> yeah. Let's move on to something, <laughs> some more spy tips, shall we? How okay. about okay? How about learning different languages? Now, besides being more a cultured person, you never know when you may say go on vacation or somebody comes up to you and speaks a different language. Are they asking you a simple question? Are they insulting you? Are they going to follow you? But if you speak many multiple languages, not only is it good for you personally, this I think will make you feel more comfortable because the more languages you speak, the more you'll become prepared if someone comes up and speaks to you, say in Russian or French or Spanish or or speaks in Spatry's terms, which is very hard, sometimes difficult to understand, right, Spatry? Well, the thing is, this this does have advantage, especially if you are uh, going to a country, you know, uh, as a tourist and that sort of thing, and you know the language, but you want to act dumb and pretend that you don't understand what people are saying. And then, you know, when they're, you know, saying these insults, oh, look at that, look at that sucker, you know, over here, you know, with that ugly broad that he's with and blah, 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 blah. You can be thinking in the back of your head and then just catch him by surprise and throw throw a nasty response right back at him when they, you know, um, when they realize that you're fluent in their language, you know. Well, yeah, I don't know. I would. That makes perfect sense. So your ears and your mind, that's your listening bug, right? Oscalt, what do you say? Print, colon, heel, hello, uh, oh, world. See, it's always good to know another language. Uh, I don't know what you said, but sure. Uh, that's some Python to print the word, uh, basically to print the word in console to say hello world. It's like kind of like the first thing you'll ever learn in a programmable language. Yo prende en dos piquitos para no las tías. Nosotros sucamos como como tú. <laughs> See, Smith. I have, have no idea what you said. Yeah. All right. Basically, I said we play like you do. See, Smith. Go ahead. To go on what Oscar was saying, print colons quotes. Hello, comma space quotes world comma and parentheses. Now it's Python 3 for you anyway, but uh, yeah. I don't know what I was going to say though. This could even happen if you're actually in your native country. Someone could be speaking a separate language, and if you know that language, you're better off, because then you can say in their language. Yeah, how about not talking, thinking I can't understand you right in front of me? Uh, C. Smith, you would not pass the spy test because one of the skills of being a spy is having a very good memory. Crap. So sorry. Goodbye. No, I'm just kidding. All right. 10. Print hello world. 20. Go to 10. Enough. Okay. Let's go to the next tip. Why not read... Nonfiction, and I stress the word nonfiction. Read nonfiction spy books. <clears throat> You're bound to get a couple tips or some skills from that, right? Yeah, I'd say so. Okay. How about um, getting in shape? Maybe learning kung fu or self defense. Of course, the real uh, skill of being a spy is to not attract attention, of course, like fishing with dynamite. Uh, <laughs> You want to fish silently, but yeah, learning self-defense because you never know when you may have to defend yourself, and this is really more common sense than anything else, but I would say at least keep in shape, you know, in case you are captured and, you know, put through the torture test to give up all those Arch Linux secrets that Spatchery re refuses to. Yeah, but the thing is, you know, you don't necessarily have to be in shape if you know how to take a, for instance, a uh, aluminum can and make a deadly weapon out of it that you could, you know, um, defend yourself with. It, you, you'd be amazed at all the things that if you look around the room, you know, uh, things that you can use 
to defend yourself with. You know, the kitchen is a dangerous place to get into an argument, for instance. I would have to agree, gentlemen, but to me it's just common sense to take care of your health, especially if you're a spy. Right, C. Smith? First off, I'm going to say, especially a pyromaniac. Anyway, yeah, it's, it's a really good idea to just stay in shape, especially if you're going to be doing stuff like, oh, say, climbing down a window. Did I say that right? Oh, well... According to what I see in the in the newspapers and the internet webs, uh, Americans they don't really seem to be that fit, to be perfectly honest. And I say that as an Irish citizen. <laughs> I kid, I kid. But yeah, of course, if you're not fit, you're not going to be a spy. You don't see uh, you don't see uh, some obese man running around with a 007, do you? No, you see uh, skinny fellows running around with him. Yeah, and just have a pocket full of smoke bombs, you know, and just pop one on the ground, and then, you know, the smoke fills the room, and you can easily make your escape. I just had a had a vision. <clears throat> you, you were right about this country is not in shape. Something about 60% of the citizens of the USA are really out of shape, which I suppose is not funny, but I just had a vision of a, <clears throat> of a spy or an out-of-shape cop try to catch a thief as he's, as he's eating his jelly donuts and is drooling out of his mouth saying stop thief and he's like drooling all this stuff out of his mouth but yeah that is kind of sad to see that especially when you see them curling a 20 pound cheeseburger you know i mean that's no form of exercise and all that cholesterol and everything yeah 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 speaking of which have you ever seen anybody overweight serving subs at subway you know what? No, I haven't. Does that, mean that, does that mean that you guys are all spies? Is that what it is? Yeah, that's what it means. <laughs> Fine. We all put right. microchips in the subs, and they, and they let us know everything you're doing. Here's a tidbit of information for you guys. If you're looking for a good pastry and you're in America, all you need to do is go to your local police station and ask, Yo, dudes, where's the closest, uh, you know, good donut shop? And... They'll point out about 12 to you. Well, here's the thing. Unless these real spies are on a mission, you will probably never see a real spy inside a donut shop, shop right? Not unless they're trying to uh, acquire a target in the donut shop. Yes, their mission is to find out who is stealing all the glaze. Okay, let's move on to another tip. Let's see, what do I have here on my list? Oh, well, this makes sense, guys. How about learning how to read lips, right? Now, this could come in handy. Like, say you're in a club, and you're on the lookout for nice-looking women, and if you can read their lips, you can tell if they're saying something nice or evil about you. Right, Spatry? Yeah, but what if it, what if uh, they're, they they can sense that you're watching them, so they're doing like that one comedian that that you know years ago that could you know uh, he used to do those impressions of those uh, Chinese actors in the film and that sort of thing, and he used to talk and move his lips and, then, and contort his mouth a different way than what he was saying. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know, but still, I look if you can read lips and someone else can't, to me that's very. Uh, exclusive skill. Right, C. Smith? I can say that's true. I can't even read lips. I wish I could. Can you, Oskalt? Why would I want to read lips? They're so useful for so many other reasons. But it does... <laughs> I kid, I kid. It does come in handy for uh, people, though, um, who are deaf, because, uh, you know, when, when they're you know, communicating with people, especially people that don't know sign language, they have to know how to read people's lips. You know, so they're actually trained to be able to do that. So it's more of a, more of a pragmatic skill, something that is very useful for some people in, in everyday life, right? Exactly, yes. I'll buy that theory. Let's see, what else do I have? Oh, here's something, guys, and I should have thought of this tip in the beginning. If you really want to think like a spy or be a spy, Shouldn't you, like, delete yourself from the Internet? Yeah, I would have to say no Facebook, no Google+, no Twitter. I mean, you, literally, literally, you'd have to be non-existent.
Yeah, I mean, now this, of course, does not mean that you cannot cannot use the internet, but you want to be in stealth mode 24-7 if you really wanted to stealth yourself or think like a spy. Oscar, how do you see it? Yeah. 100%. I mean, it's quite scary. If you've never done it before, Google your, Google your name right now. If it's a very popular name, Google it with your like home location, and you'd be surprised at the amount of links that pop up. It's quite scary. I have a very uncommon name, so just typing in my own name. I'm not going to give it out to anyone here. But just typing that in, you know, it's scary what I see. It's like all these things from like when I was about nine years old, and it's just sitting there on the internet. Yeah, that also means no diaspora. But yeah, that's really all I have to say. Yeah, I, I have to agree with... Uh with uh, what was just said, because, I mean, if you type my name in on Google or Yahoo search, I mean, I'm all over the place, you know. But I also have other aliases online as well. Okay, so it may... Yeah, yeah go ahead, Oscar. I was just saying that I also have uh, multiple aliases, and that's a really good idea, just for common security reasons. It's good to have multiple aliases. Yeah, and... Uh... Yeah, and those other aliases that I do use, nobody knows about. And if I were to do a search on them, nothing would come up. Some very good common sense tips here for all the listeners out there. Very good. Well, let me see what other tips I have here. Um, some other tips would be um, <clears throat> always have a backup plan. If, if something goes wrong, like say you're fishing with dynamite and your dynamites are all duds, make sure you have your depth charges ready to go, right, Spatry? Exactly. Of course, if you really wanted to prove yourself as a spy, Spatry, learning how to fish with dynamite silently. <laughs> now that's that's a skill. All right, that's about, that's yeah. pouring drums of toxic waste into the lake. Oh please, we're not gonna go there. <laughs> Let me see. What other tips? Well, guys, let me ask you. Do you, C. Smith, have any tips on how to be a spy? Sadly, no. Oscar. Any tips to be a spy? Well, I'm trying to think. Tips to be a spy. You have to be elusive. You have to be unknown. You have to be cunning. You have to be smart. You have to be above the rest. You don't, it's not going to be someone that's average that's going to be a spy. You have to have that brain thought that Put you a little bit above everyone else. Patrick, do you have any tips? Yeah, um, really, you need to have some really good tactical combat training. As was said before, yes, you really do need to be in fairly decent shape. Um, yeah, Oscold hit 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 the nail on the head. You have to be elusive. You have to you have to you know be brilliant. You have to think like a cop. You have to think like a criminal. You know. Um, there's a lot of different things that would factor into it, I'd imagine. I will tell you guys a funny story, and it, it was only after I was doing this, and I guess after I did, I guess I was thinking like a spy, meaning always be prepared. Um, after my son was born, this was like when he was potty training. You know, we buy these, uh, parents buy these little plastic portable toilets, if you guys know what I mean, right? Yes. Okay. So stay with me on this. So I bought these little portable potties, and I'm thinking, you know what, son? We're going to take you right on the highway, go into the city, and it would be like a 30-minute trip. Now, there would be some stretches of highway where if he had to go to the potty, to the bathroom, it may be a few minutes or longer to get to the off-ramp, which, which means at the time when he was younger, he would have an accident. I'm thinking, boy... Now I'm thinking as a father, try to do this with the least amount of work as possible. How can I resolve this potential problem for a spy, right? <clears throat> so I told my son, hey, this is what we're going to do. You want to take a ride? Yes, daddy. Great. We're going to take a ride. I'm going to play your favorite music, and I'm going to bring that emergency potty. And I would have that in the back of the van. I pulled out the rear two seats for him to have room that if we're driving on the highway and he had to go I would just pull off to the side of the road he would go in the back and do his thing and you know what this may sound funny but he did this several times and it saved me from poopy cleaning if you know what I mean let's see what else do we have here don't be nervous 
or react unusual if you see something that shouldn't be there makes sense to me <clears throat> if you see something or someone suspicious in the car try to memorize the license plate uh, well, yeah, well th here's a good one don't carry any form of ID on you unless of course you are going to the police for a reason and what's he do let's see do I have anything else here oh obviously if you feel threatened going into a public place where there's more people into a crowd it should be safer you would think um, have partners have friends now this makes sense more like if you like to go out and party and drink have a designated driver now for that you don't have to think like a spy just think with use your head so you'll come back home safe in one piece let's see anything else here learning how to sketch if you are if you need to make a mental picture of a suspect or someone that is kind of fishy learning how to sketch that person can come in handy I suppose uh, uh, learning spy jargon, you know, this is the terminology of spies, this is above and beyond learning a different language. And really, you know, what we've talked about tonight has very little to do with gadgets, unless you want to consider your brain, the human mind, a gadget. And I do, because when all things considered, your brain is the most powerful weapon of all. So I guess the final advice I can give any spy wannabes or someone who wants to improve the way they think, be prepared, learn how to adapt, improvise, and always, always keep your cool. Right, Spatry? Yeah, I'd say so. And something else, you know, it's really funny. You, re remembering all these spy movies and everything, you know, the 007 films and everything, all these technologies they introduced, and we're talking about the 70s spy films, and now everybody has similar technologies so the, like those built into their cell phones. Now we have portable little cameras that we can carry with us, you know? Uh, you know, so, I mean, we could, you know, I mean, if you were to catch a car accident and that sort of thing, anybody with a cell phone can pull their phone out of their pocket and take pictures, that sort of thing. So, I mean, we have a lot of those technologies available to us today. Your cell phone, in essence, is a spy gadget. You can Yes. Right. You can communicate, you can take a picture, video, GPS, record sounds. I suppose you could even use it as a weapon and throw it at somebody if you have to. But that would be kind of expensive, right, Spatry? So. And I can't, I can't imagine it doing much damage. I mean, cell phones aren't made out of a material that if you hit somebody in the head, it's going to crack their cranium. Uh, no, but you could always put a little piece of C4 plastique in it and then throw it at the guy, right? <laughs> I love it. Well, on that uh, nonsense piece of uh, tip, I think we will conclude this Total OS Today show podcast for this evening. I would like to thank C. Smith. would like to thank uh, Oskaltz. Uh, thank you, Spatry. And on behalf of myself, Toss Today, thank you for listening and join us every week. Thank you for joining us again this evening and join us uh, every Sunday night on the live Total OS Today show. Don't forget to join uh, Spatry's show here on the terrific Linux Distro community. That is uh, Friday, uh, not Friday, sorry, Saturday nights, Saturday nights, 8 p.m. That is the um, Spatry Zoo Crew. And uh, I think, Spatry, that's it. Unless you have something else to say, go ahead and take us out. We will see you same time, same channel next week. Thank you, all of you. Ciao.